Good evening. Uh, we got a few people still coming. We got Bob here too. Okay. Um, here we have the joint finance committee and select board meeting. And tonight we have a lineup of um, individual, the departments are assessors, library, police, highway, South County EMS, water department, Tritown Beach, town buildings, audit, and the OPEB. Uh, we'll keep the audit and the OPEB at the end. Um, I can see that we probably have more discussion with police, highway, um, possibly water department and town building. So with that said, um, let's try to get through this with uh, those areas that um, may not take as much time. Okay, so first and foremost, um, I see Lynn's here, Lynn. Yeah, I'm here for the um, OPEB conversation. Okay. Do you see that as being drawn out or straightforward? Um, I think it should be pretty straightforward. Okay. I can give you the status of the OPEB account. Okay. Uh, why don't we take uh, the OPEB first and then we'll move on from there. Lynn, go ahead. Okay. Um, last year, because of the unknowns of the fiscal year, we decided not to fund anything into OPEB. Um, we have been religiously putting in $25,000 a year. Um, right now, I, our most recent actuarial for, first of all, um, OPED is other post-employment benefits. Um, so it would be the retirees insurance and things like that. Um, that would be paid out of the OPEB fund. Um, we had an actuarial done in 2019, and that value says that we have to have what they predict we would need within the 30, 30 years of the actuary is $1,197,087. Right now we have 200 and one dollars and two hundred and one thousand four hundred and fourteen dollars and sixty two cents um so i mean we're working towards it uh right now we're still at this point not utilizing that fund trying to build it up enough so that in the future when a lot of the we'll say more uh I don't want to say old employees, but <laughs> like me, old retirees. employees retire, no. uh, then you were going to, as more employees retire, we're going to be needing that OPEB fund. Sure. Right now, we've been absorbing those costs within the regular health insurance budget. Um, so uh, my recommendation is to go back to the $25,000 a year if we can do that as we build it up. Um, I have invested the money in with an investment firm called Bartholomew. Last year, the uh, interest on was not terribly good um, for 2020. That uh, for the full year, it was four thousand five hundred and five dollars. Uh, for 2021, so far, it's been eight thousand six hundred and fifty. So we're, we're doing much better on the OPEB. Uh, over the course of the whole um, time that I've had it in OPEB, which is from 2016 on, we've averaged about seven, almost 8%. Um, so that's not too bad, much better than what you would get in your savings account in the bank. Mm -hmm. So I'm just here to say, I'm really encouraging the finance committee to approve a uh, sum of money towards OPEP for this year. Very good. Thank you for that overview and explanation. I'll turn it over to anyone who has a question for Lynn regarding OPEP. Are there any questions? When do you think it'll start being hit? Um, that it's all predicted on when people start retiring. 
And you have any idea, thoughts on that? Uh, well, we have a number of people who are getting up there, myself included. Um, there are a few teachers, not not too many, but there are a few teachers who would be also included in this. Um, I would say over the next five years, we may have we may have six employees that could retire. And then we'd be responsible. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean we have to start tapping into the OPEP fund if it's possible to continue to fund the just through the regular health insurance account, we could do that. Um, the good thing about building up the OPEP account is because it gains more interest than our regular bank right. account. It's a, you know, it's a better idea to try to build that up as much as we can. So how okay. do we balance that? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we it's a responsibility that we have to help benefit our retirees. Um, it, it is going to be a hit over the years, uh, especially as people retire, the, the replacements need to be hired and they could be asking for benefits as well. Um, so I can't really tell you when we will have to definitely start tapping um, the OPEB, it would probably depend on the financial situation of the, the town in that particular year. Um, you know, we can tap it now, but is that, a, is that, I'm not quite sure is that's what we really want to do. Bob, you good? Oh, uh, yes, that's a pretty generic answer. I mean, you really, you're just trying to look forward down the road and when, Right. Where you're gonna, where, what, how much of a pile of money are you gonna have, and when you're gonna start utilizing it? I mean, it's really just a herd. Yeah. I mean, you really don't know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we can't anticipate based on, like I said, we probably will have six retirements over the next five years. Is that going to be enough to put us over on the health insurance account to start tapping into the uh, OPEB? I don't know that. Okay. Yeah, nobody knew, nobody would know that. Right. Okay. Okay. Okay, Lynn, thank you very much. Um, that'll be a strong consideration, I'm sure, by all members of the Finance Committee and Select. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, following uh, OPEB, um, why don't we go to the library? Cindy, how you doing? I'm good, Paul. How are you? Terrific, terrific. Um, in this time of COVID, uh, anytime, anytime you can be seen, it's a good thing. Um, yes. So, so um, let's just uh, let's just just to sort of streamline things. Um, why don't you give us the um, a look at your budget in regards to the changes, specifically the changes. Um, what's up? What's down? and how it's reflected in, in the overall budget. And following that, uh, what you think about the general condition of the library and moving forward, what you see your needs and library needs will be. So Okay. So I did level fund everything um, to go along with this year. The only thing I did add into the budget that we did not have was a $375 request for Wildberry which is an online subscription service that our patrons can subscribe to, which will allow them to get a weekly email mm -hmm. of all the new releases that we've added into our collection so they can browse comfortably from their home and place a hold on the book without having to come into the library. Um, we are currently doing browsing by appointments and curbside pickups, which we've been doing for about the last year. Okay. Um, I, as far as the library's in good shape, as far as I know, it's being well maintained. We have, um, we're getting our books in regularly and our other materials. I'm not sure what else you would like to know. I do have some statistics if you're interested. Well, I am. Prior to that though, if I could ask you, um, there was a, a, a jump in the maintenance um, line Oh, there yeah. was. There wasn't supposed to be. Maybe. Do I have an old 
I don't know. Thousand dollar jump from thirty five hundred to forty five hundred. Yeah. Oh, that was that. That was a typo. It should have stayed thirty five hundred. Okay. Well, never mind. That was easy. Very good. All right. Um, I must have put the four in the wrong place. Sorry about gotcha. that. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that that certainly changes that. Um, why don't you give us your data in respect to utilization at the library? Right. So even though we have we have been closed some and open for browsing. We still have um, our total collection right now is 12,363 items. That includes books, DVDs, CDs, audiobooks. Um, so far in, in fiscal year 21, FY21, which would have started in July, we have circulated 4,067 books or 67 items. Our total circulation last year was 80, was 8,040 items. Mm -hmm. The total value of everything that circulates through our library, not just the materials that we own, but the materials that our patrons mm -hmm. will get through interlibrary loan is $99,875.66. And even though we have been in a pandemic, we've actually increased our library patrons uh, last year we had 631 registered patrons. This year we have 636. So we have five new patrons to our library. And we've had a total of 1,610 visits to the library. This includes coming in person and doing curbside pickup. And I was able to coordinate with other local libraries to offer online programming. And so we've had 155 patrons participate in online programs over the last year. Were you are you are you happy with those numbers or that kind of participation? Is it more than what you projected? Or it sounds it is, it is definitely more than I would have projected because I know a lot of people are getting zoomed out. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy that we've had that many people attend programs. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. Terrific. Alrighty, I'll open this up. Does anyone have a question for Cindy regarding the library, either the budget or the library needs or anything moving forward within that department? How, how do we uh, <clears throat> how do we stand on the uh, handicap elevator? I will defer that to Bob Smith, who's the chairman of the trustees, who's also on this meeting. Uh, Dan, we're waiting for um, town meeting to approve money. And as soon as that happens, uh, Margot Jones has plans ready uh, and we will be able to go out to bid immediately uh, once we secure funding. And uh, the, we've constantly been in touch with Margot. We have some things that we need to do in our North stack room um, to make it handicapped accessible as well. So um, we're working on that and we're ready to launch. Very good. Perfect. That's good. Good news. Okay. Anyone else have any questions for Cindy or Bob? No. Uh, okay. We're good. Thank you both Thank you. very much. Right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. You too. Good. Thanks for all your hard work. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Um, okay. Moving forward, library um, assessors. Okay. So next on the list is. Um, Hey Paul, if we, if we could do the assessors, sure. I think the I think uh, Cynthia is on the phone, and okay. I think she's I think she's yeah, trying yeah. to get home as soon as she can. Okay, so. all right, then let's do it. All right, thanks. Okay, um, again, regarding the assessors, uh, we're looking at a at a change of nineteen point eight seven percent. Just could you explain that in your own words? I know we can see it in black and white, but an explanation from you would be helpful. Okay. Are you waiting for me to, or is Fred there and wants to do it? Um, I guess not. I'll do it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is a recertification year, and which is has has been changed from every three to every five years, which is good because now the DOR is insisting 
that we hire a consultant to value or to put a value on the uh, on several of the utilities, Berkshire Gas and Eversource. Um, we have contracted to work with our usual consultant, to whom we usually pay about $2,500 uh, when it gets uh, close to tax tax rate setting time. Um, he is charging us $9,900 uh, to do this special um, this special new assessment. So it's something we really can't not do. Gotcha. Okay. Um, any questions regarding the assessor's budget or the activities of the assessor's department from the finance committee or select board? What, I have one. What, what in the scope is driving that up to almost $10,000? They uh, uh, most of the consult most of the consultants uh, that I've heard about charge about five thousand dollars per utility. Um, uh, Mayflower valuation will do both of them, and all of the standard uh, all of the studies uh, uh, concerning sales and uh, and setting the fair market value on our houses across the whole town and businesses. So actually, this is a, a really good deal. It would be a lot more if we had gone with somebody else. Thank you. Um, any other questions for Cindy? Sure, I have a question. Yep. Is how, how um, I don't know how to word it. How does the assessment affect our ability to have a $1.2 million cushion to tax up that much more? Uh, it well, might, might, be, a... it might So we have the ability, most towns are taxed probably at 98% of what they, what they can be. And we are probably at 85 maybe. When you say tax debt, are you talking I, about overall I guess, uh, assessment? I guess capacity would be a word. I'm, I'm not really sure how to word it. He's asking about excess levy capacity. I guess, I mean, I, I yeah. It's a lot. I don't know why it's so much. Well, well, you, might, you, know, you might not know any, either. I mean, I don't know. I'm just asking. The assessors only set value. They set value right. yeah. at okay. at a market value across the town. Right. Um, and we always come in slightly under that sort of standard routine. Uh, a position is to come in somewhere between 95 and 99% of market value. <clears throat> so that, and then all new growth is what, you know, raises... Uh, uh, substantially. So this is probably so amount. this is probably being driven by new growth. In part. Okay, I, yeah. I just try. I just trying to get a handle on why it's so. <coughs> surrounding towns don't have that, and we do. Why we have the excess capacity, and other towns don't. Right. I well, I think it's going to be a function of, uh, you know, the assessments versus um what we owe and brian are you are you in on this conversation can you jump in here i, I mean your excess levy capacity increases when you don't when your when the town portion of the budget doesn't increase um in relation to um uh, in relation to how much the total assessed value grows. So it's either a function of, so, so as that each year, if, if each year, if we're spending less, if the increase is less than um, the levy capacity, essentially the levy capacity grows then it's gonna keep growing. Yeah, right. I didn't say that right, but. I kind of get it. It's because we're not spending, we're so not spending like to a, our limit each like year. 
a fiscal management thing that's working in our favor. Well, yes. yeah, I mean, it's, it's taxation. If you have a house just, just for raw numbers and you should be taxing that house at $100, but you're only taxing that house at $80, then that gap, that gap between those two points continues to build over time if you keep that taxation there. You know, I mean, it's only, you know, it's, it's a good thing. I mean, it's- Yeah, it's a good thing. I just want to know why it's so big. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, boom, boom, boom. Any other questions for the assessors um, or the assessor that we have on the line or the department itself in any way, shape or form? No? Okay, well, thank you very much for joining this meeting. And uh, we look forward to your future assessments in a way. Okay. Can't wait. <laughs> in a way, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Uh, Brian, are there any other um, individuals on here that you think need to uh, um, maybe need to be at another meeting or we need to get them sooner than later? Or we got Keith. We got chief and um, yep. So, so Zach Zachary Smith from South County EMS is going to be later. He's at a meeting right now. Okay. Um, and Wayne's coming a little bit later. He's at a baseball meeting. Jonathan's okay. coming a little bit later. So, so that really leaves police and highway. Okay. All right, Keith. Highway, it's your. Right. How you doing tonight? Terrific. No. Okay. You well, want me to, you know, start by going through my budget? Then. Well, yeah. Budget. You know, I think you know, as as we've said, um, you know, why don't you let us know? You know, you know, we see the budget. We see what the numbers are. Give us from your perspective what the changes you made, why you had to make them, and the general condition of the department itself and what's coming downstream so okay um in my general highways account um the increases are a little bit in regards to street sweeping um i am increased a little bit and basically um going back to like fiscal years 14 15 16 and 17 quite a few years ago we were we were budgeting seven thousand dollars during those time frames, and when we were able to stop getting um, using sand, and we were able to um, eliminate a lot of street sweeping, we cut it. I cut it way back down. However, you know, as time goes on, a lot of the streets are seeing um, just organic build up, build build up that needs to be swept, um, where you get a lot of debris from sticks and and just natural um, sand and gravel that get comes in off of you know gravel driveways and things like that. So we need to still do a little sweeping every now and then. So that's gone up a little bit. Yeah. Um, as far as the catch basin cleaning and traffic painting, the, those are minor increases because I've seen increases in the hourly rates from the contractors that are doing that. Um, we're not really changing anything as far as the hours that we're using other than the hourly rate has increased. And so overall, the, the general highways section is a 1.91% increase. Um, moving on to the, to the second section under my winter roads, um, the, you know, basically looking at, um, a, a little bit less there. However, the one thing that I did point out to Brian that I did not include in my budget this year because there was some discussion of maybe purchasing a uh, sidewalk clearing machine, you know, snowblower, was as you all know, my budget took on the responsibility of paying for the contractor to clear the sidewalk in the center of town. And we did it knowing that obviously winter roads can be deficit spent and if we got into a problem we could just declare an emergency and deficit spend it so i didn't include it any money in there for that this year um this year we spent three thousand dollars with that contractor and i was able to absorb it within my own budget 
and I'm happy to leave it the way it is, but I'm just pointing that out that if we have a bad year and we continue to have a contract to do the sidewalk, that's just that's food right. for thought, just to let you know where it stands. Okay, good. Other than that, nothing really changed in there at all. Yep. Moving on to the road machinery section, um, again, just I feel that you know that that bad year we had in 2020 where I spent thirty one thousand um, dollars. The way my budget's happening going right now, um, I, I will probably you know make it with the twenty four thousand five hundred I have. Um, so um, just to keep pace with it, you know, increase in material. You know, you know, I've added a little bit there, but, and then moving on to garage maintenance. Um, again, a very minimal um, increase in my phone line. And, and that is, you know, based on my actual expenditures of 2020, which were more than what I had appropriated. So it, it's just basically covering what I had appropriated. Um, and lastly, in the in the tree department, um, that I've just level funded, um, and I feel we can sustain that number for for now. Okay. That um, that's a great increase. I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now. Um, I don't think anybody's going to uh, have an issue with that. But uh, I'll put it out to the group. Are there any questions for Keith in regards to um, the highway, the roads, all of the above? Fuel, let's talk about fuel. The, the, the fuel account, um, that I'd have to defer to Brian because I, I don't budget that. It's in, we have a separate fuel account. No. And I think, Brian, I think you bumped it a little bit. Yeah. That's in the town buildings account. I think we were, I think we were maybe looking at bumping it two grand just to be safe. Okay. Um, do you want to talk at all now about any kind of equipment or anything along those lines? Um, you know, in regards to, you know, we had a conversation last Luckman's meeting in regards to the, um, but purchasing a used snowblower for the center of town and you know with many factors we we felt it was probably best at the moment to um to table that until at a later time where where we can evaluate things at at a future time so that's one thing that's been taken off the table um as far as other things that i have on there um snow plow um the last time we purchased a snowplow was in 2002. Um, I just, you know, in many cases they can be kept going by welding and welding, but it's, I'm, I'm seeing the point where the, the fatigue of the metal um, on our big snow, 11 foot snowplows is reached there. We're, we're just having, you know, chasing one weld after another weld when they start to crack. So it's, we need to, you know, replace those. Um, you know, going back to the to the 1997 and 2002 were the three snow plows that we replaced in those those years. Um, we've gotten our life out of them, and they just need to we need to start replacing them. So that's one thing that I had on the capital, and I believe that's the only thing that I've actually requested for this fiscal year. However, that you know, looking a little further out, I have the um, replacing the the TN65 and a little further out than that was the um, replacing the, the F550. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alrighty. So short term, you thinking that snow plow was going to have, what kind of money's on that? Um, I don't have that in front of me, but I believe it was 10,000 or 10,500. Okay. All right. All right. That's good. Um, does anyone have any further questions for Keith in regards to the roads or any of those cap capital items that he has just mentioned? Uh, how that big, how about that big expensive machine that we bought last year work out? The the excavator? Yep. 
the excavator, um, we're, we're using it. Um, we find that it's actually um, beneficial in, in many aspects. And one is especially is um, assisting because it has a grapple on it, assisting with um, trees down, clearing um, trees and feeding it, getting them into the chipper. It saves, it saves on la labor and in time, you know, when roads are shut down and closed. Um, other than that, we, you know, the we have other projects that we're going to be doing with it this summer. Mm -hmm. And so um, it is definitely something that will be utilized forever from here on out. Terrific. Okay. Well, that's great. Um, oh, that'd be good. Okay. Um, last question I'd just like to ask you is this. When I look at the Department of Transportation website and I look at the miles of roads in this town registered with the state, it's like 31.7. Is that accurate or do you have another figure? Um, I'm just throwing out, you don't have to ask. I mean, yeah, if you I, I know, I think. I thought it was a little, just a little over that. I, I'd have to check to see if that includes the, the roads that we've accepted recently. Mm -hmm. If you could do that, if you could do that, it would be great. And the reason we're looking at this is because we'd like to establish some kind of a, um, a metric here, very much like they do in the schools. The schools have a cost per pupil, and you can look at that over time and see, you know, is there value there? Oh, why did it go up? Why didn't, why it went down? So we're thinking about doing the same thing with uh, cost per miles, um, cost per mile within the town. And I just did a rough number, you know, with the miles that were on there and the budgets that we have. And right now I think it's a deal, to be honest. Um, but I don't know how we compare to others. And I don't know if we're ever going to be able to com compare to others. Uh, but right now within the town, um, it's looking like, you know, we're getting our money's worth from what we're investing um, in the highway department. So if you could just check out that number and see if it's real or should it be something else, that would be great. Yeah, I, I can do that. I mean, the, the right off the top of my head the one thing that i would say that will be difficult is you know making a fair comparison um there are communities right around us that uh, when it comes to the highway departments they their budgets are nothing more than what i would consider a maintenance budget that yeah. do no so no actual construction so the minute something needs to be done with a piece of equipment it goes out to a private contractor which yeah. would not show up in there in a budget. So yeah. you have to go looking for that stuff. Um, I do know some communities around here actually have like capital articles in their on town meeting floor. So when they want to do some other road work, they, they add money on a at their annual town meeting under a special article. I mean, a, an article to add yeah. money to budget. So you really would need to dig pretty deep to get a fair comparison. And, yeah. and the other thing in regards to Waitley goes is, you know, our, our, yeah. really, our highway department is really becoming uh, what I would say leaning towards a DPW. Um, mm -hmm. I get many, you know, requests in the select board off, you know, tell me, you know, to do a lot of other projects that are no longer what I would consider highway department responsibilities. And I'm not, I'm not saying that as a complaint. I'm just throwing that out there because the finance committee has to realize that a lot of the things that I do are no longer comparable to other highway departments that are just doing highway projects. Yeah. And like I said, I don't know that we're ever going to be able to compare it to other municipalities, um, but we can compare it to our own year on year. And, you know, more than that, you know, I, 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 it sounds to me like it would be too much work. 
to someone to really go ahead and do that. But my other question, just switching gears, is in large municipalities, people who have sidewalks in front of their home, they're required to clear those sidewalks themselves. The, the city doesn't come out with a snowblower and get rid of all the snow. How does that, how does that work there and not work here? Yeah, it, that, Paul, that was something that the, the select board had that discussion before they opted to have a contractor do it. Um, in you know local towns right around us, other than when you get into the big cities like Northampton and Greenfield, um, I can tell you that um, like Hatfield, Deerfield, and Sunderland all purchase equipment to do it themselves. Um, they don't hire contractors because they they see the, the in the long term it's it's cheaper to do it themselves than it is to pay contractors. Um, Deerfield right now on their town meeting floor, they're going to be looking at $105,000 for a new sidewalk um, piece of equipment to clear the sidewalks for the town of Deerfield. Um, so um, it, it was looked at, you know, in regards to the center of town. Um, also it, it, trying to be fair to the fact that we only have a very small segment of the um, population that would have to pay or be responsible to clear the sidewalk on their property if the town makes the bylaw saying that. But um, I guess I would say that would be a conversation to have with the select board as to why they may have chose that route. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any other questions for Keith regarding anything that he's in charge of? Uh, hey, Paul, the, yep. the, the thing that, that measures uh, how effective uh, I think Keith is doing with his budget. And it really comes down to not only the town level, but you can see it at the state level, is the condition, condition of the highways, the pavement condition, and also the condition of the bridges. Yep. The, state, the state and county know the conditions, the criteria for evaluating the bridges, uh, and there's survey data on that. And also for pavements, there's data on that. And I think if you want to compare one town to another, you need to look at that kind of criteria. That directly relates to maintenance of the highway. Mm -hmm. that Keith yep. has been doing for years. Mm -hmm. And I would say that, you know, it, it's been done very well, what I see personally, but I don't know compared to other towns. Burkhog has some of that. If you want to get really into matrix, that's the things you got to look at, not just dollars spent. Well, I, I, I agree with you, Fred. And I, I, I think that, you know, my original statement of saying that um, I, I don't see us using it as a comparative right away um, because we don't know what happens in other towns. Um, all we can do is very much like what we do in the schools is a cost per pupil. Um, and yeah, we look at other towns, but there is some sim similarity there. Uh, but in the case of the highway department, uh, I don't question the quality of the work. Let me tell you, you come into West Waitley um, after a snowstorm and you know where Waitley line ends and the Conway line begins. You don't even have to look at the sign. You know, um, our guys do a good job. Um, but there is a responsibility to the taxpayer. And I think the taxpayer has a right to know what they're spending per mile. Um, and I looked at it and that was about 12 grand a mile. Now between me and the miles, about 15 houses. That's less than a grand per house per year. That's, that's not bad. That's not a bad thing for snow removal and maintenance and everything else. Um, so, I think that knowing this number can work to, our, to an advantage all the way around. It can show the value uh, without having to look at other towns. So that's my only point. And um, anyway, I'll get off that soapbox. And um, are there any further questions? But you made a good point, Fred, and I get you. Um, and if we do go down that road, um, well, Let's see what happens. Okay. 
Um, any further questions for Keith? No, yes. Okay, Keith, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Nice, Good nice night. job. Okay, okay. Um, next up is uh, the police department, Chief. Um, Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? I'm great. How are great. you? Good. Um, well, we all had a chance to uh, to look at the uh, the overview. Um, yeah. And um, I have to say that um, overall, the budget, um, you know, pretty neat. Um, could you give us a an overview of the changes um, and a little update. I saw the write-up and I think that's probably where most of the questions will be as to what's coming down in the future um, that's going to impact the department. So why don't you just give us a, 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 th a thumbnail as to uh, the changes on the budget in terms of dollars and cents. Um, Total, you've got a uh, you got a 045 percent change. Um, so um, go go ahead, you've got it. Yeah, so it's about it's about a 950 dollar increase uh, over last year's budget. Uh, those increases, there's there's only four increases. Uh, the first one, uh, an increase in association dues uh, for membership associations that that uh, I belong to. Um, the second is the increase in the cost of ammunition. Um, for whatever reason, the ammunition is going up. They're looking at about 10, 10 to 12% uh, by the end of April hmm. for ammunition uh, as far as an increase goes. Uh, so we just uh, adjusted it to accommodate for that. Um, part of our ammunition budget also includes taser, uh, taser cartridges which each officer in order to be certified has to uh, deploy two taser cartridges each year. Uh, so that's part of the, the ammunition cost as well. Uh, the third is increase in radar and LIDAR calibrations, which is done annually. And the last one is for the uh, increased cost for, um, it says user fees, but it's more of a maintenance agreement per year on the, the new countywide um, system that we have that uh, we're all sharing for our record management system. So uh, each town still is responsible for their own portion of the maintenance agreement. So um, ours has gone up. And that's, that's it for uh, the increases. If there's any questions on those, I can certainly try to answer them. Anyone have any questions for Chief Savine regarding um, the budget? Um, I don't. I don't think anyone else does. It looks pretty okay. straightforward, and um, I think that's fine. But of particular interest is what's coming down the road. Yes. <laughs> so why don't you give us, in your own words, um, a thumbnail of, um, of the reform bill? Okay, so when this, when I submitted this budget, we still hadn't had um, really good information as, to, as far as what the training requirements going to be. So for the police reform bill, um, where's part of the bill is switching to a, a police officer's standards uh, in training. So it's a it's a committee that's being formed or a board that is gonna certify or decertify each police department and each police officer uh, in the Commonwealth. So when it comes to the officers, what was written into the bill, the police reform bill that was signed back in December, the end of December, what was written into the bill was that um, each officer, each part-time officer, reserve officer, they're gonna be certified as of July 1st Every police officer in the Commonwealth will be will be certified as a police officer. They're kind of calling it the grandfather clause. Um, in addition to that, the bill also states that each officer has to attend additional training. And that's where the 
kind of the gap has been in communication and trying to figure out what that's going to be. So the latest information we have, which was as of today, the post committee has been formed. Um, they are going to take recommendations from our municipal police training committee for training. Our municipal police training committee has been working for the last few months trying to uh, come up with what they're calling a bridge academy. The bridge academy is designed to take the reserve officer and get them to a level of certification equal to or equivalent of a full-time police officer. So everybody will be at the same standard in the entire state. Initially, those cons our, our concerns were that the current reserve academy is only 380 hours and the full-time academy is over 900 hours. So that was a big gap. That was a, a lot of hours that we were going to be looking at for training. They, they understood that. And from the MPTC's, MPTC's perspective, the latest that we have is what they're going to propose to the post committee is 200 hours of training per police officer, per part-time police officer. Um, so additional hours? Additional hours. <clears throat> so that's the so-called bridge academy that, that each of the part-time officers will have to attend. Now, they're, they're going to be right, making that recommendation, but the way, the way the certification goes is starting July 1st, everybody's certified. So anybody, you, if you break the alphabet up into thirds, anybody in the first third of the alphabet has one year to achieve those 200 hours of training. Everybody in the second third of the alphabet has two years to complete that training. And everybody in the third, the, the final third of the alphabet has three years to complete that training. So they broke that up so we wouldn't have to do this all in one year. So they, they kind of broke it up and spread it out over a three year period. So that's, that's kind of the reason that I'm looking at um, a separate account or a, sec, a separate fund, Right. excuse me, a separate fund that would pay for that training and any additional things that may, that may come up as as part of the police reform. I gave you the, the summary, which had five or six items in it. Yep. There's much more to it. Mm -hmm. It's 120 something pages um, of, of information. There's potentially some software that we're gonna have to purchase at the latest quote that I got was about $4,800 to purchase software for um, editing body cam footage. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's an additional expense. There there may be some other expenses that that we're not aware of yet. There's going to be a lot of policy changes. There's going to be certification for the police departments, which um, we don't know what they're going to use for the certification. Right now, there's an accreditation process which has 158 criteria. If they come down and say that we're going to have to match that 158 criteria. Um, that's going to be a, a difficult challenge for, for a small department. There's, there's many things in that, um, that criteria that would include much more work administratively, um, much more work training wise um, for, for our department. So we're hoping that they come in with a lesser certification, which is still going to require a bunch of work. Um, but it won't be accrediting each department. Currently, there's there's not very many accredited departments in uh, Western Massachusetts. Um, it's usually the larger departments, they assign somebody full-time to deal with just accreditation. So um, we would have to hire a, a full-time officer just to deal with accreditation hmm. and the changes. So that's, that's a kind of a big item that we're not sure where they're gonna go as far as certifying police department. So we're in the process. I've already changed some of our policies um, to match what the uh, police reform bill states. Some of the, the items in our defensive tactics policy, our body cam policy, um, some other administrative policies, to, you know, defensive tactics or use of force reporting, investigative stuff. So there's a lot of things that are, that are changing as we, as we speak. So there's a lot of things going on as far as um, police reform. Right. So that's kind of the, the nutshell of it. My big concern with police reform is that once each police officer is certified, 
Um, as I said before, they're now considered certified, so they can go anywhere and work as a police officer. Right. We have a number of part-time officers that, that are on the career path mm -hmm. to becoming full-time police officers. That's, that's their goal, a career in law enforcement. Um, so we could potentially lose half of our part-time officers and the other half of the part-time officers that, that might stay, they're the officers that they have full-time jobs, they have other careers, yep. and they only want to work once or twice a month. Mm -hmm. um, so with, with that staff of people, if that's all we had left, it's not enough to cover the shifts that we have yep. um, for the amount that they would want to work. So that's why I included the, the scary option for probably for most everybody is uh, additional full-time positions. Right. That would, that would solve not all of the world's problems, but that would, that would make it much easier. We could transition some of our part-time officers into full-time positions if that was the case. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem comes with after July 1st, hiring a new police officer. Mm -hmm. When we hire a new police officer, they have to go through the post committee certification, which includes taking a test similar to the civil service exam. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to undergo a psychological evaluation and they have to take a physical assessment. Mm -hmm. So the way, the way that we're reading the bill right now is that after July 1st, we can't hire anybody unless they've gone through that process. So the current police officers that we have would be certified mm -hmm. under the grandfather clause, but anybody new coming in would have to undergo that, that process. And that's you know, just a psychological exam. Um, if that cost comes down onto the departments, that's $750 per person to undergo a psychological event. A lot of small towns won't do, won't, guys won't do it. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, that's, that's a big, big commitment to them, especially for a guy working a full-time job. It's, it's a commitment for, for 200 hours for them. Yeah, it totally is. The, and trying to work the way the way they have it set up right now is the majority of that training is going to be online um about 80 hours of it i shouldn't say the majority the majority of the, the classroom type training would be um, online there's three blocks of training that are going to be 40 hours of training each so the, the one full week of training um, for each one of these topics so there's emergency vehicle operation there's defensive tactics and there's firearms training. So that's three weeks. And again, you know, some of our officers aren't going to, you know, they no, they're not. take three weeks off to, to attend that training. So we're looking at splitting it up over the, over the three years, looking at splitting it up throughout the year, doing night classes, weekend classes, different things like that. So once we know more, we'll know the, I, I've got a general commitment from our officers that, Based on what we what we know now, um, I'm getting a lot of positive feedback from our officers. Mm -hmm. But you know, if if things change, their their mindset could change as well. Gotcha. So it's going to be it's going to be challenging to say the least over the next few years. Certainly. Um, if, if we're going to go ahead, Fred. We're going to pay for training and, and certify these officers. Uh, can we place a a requirement on them that they will be employed by the town for the next year or two so they don't leave and go somewhere else can we do that i'm not sure that's a question we pose that to our legal counsel for mass chiefs um i'm not sure if the if brian knows more or would want to pose it to our legal counsel if we we have them sign a contract that if you know if they leave over the next three years that they'd have to pay the, the town back for the training i'm not sure if that's acceptable or ethical or not, I'm not sure. I know it happens in in, in private businesses. Uh, we'd have to check with council to see if that's that's something that could be done legally to protect, you know, protect the town's investment in mm -hmm. in the officers. I, I know some some towns have done it with full time officers. If you if they say we're gonna put you to through the full time police academy, we're gonna hire you, but you're gonna sign a contract for three years. And if you leave within those three years, you have to pay a portion or whatever back, but they're signing a contract before their employment begins. But to just turn around and, you know, take a police officer that's been on for 10 or 12 years and say, now you have to do this or you have to sign this or, you know, pay us back. I'm not sure that that's, that's going to be acceptable, but 
Well, I, I think we should seriously consider that if we're going to be paying expenses for these police officers and they're just deciding to leave, whether they're new hires or five or 10 years, I, I, I think that's something that the town should seriously look at. Oh, absolutely. There's 351 yeah. towns that are seriously looking at well, it right now. I know, but somebody is going to make a decision on, on doing that in other towns, and maybe that's something that we could uh, use here as well. And what if what if they decide not to not to sign? Does that end end their employment? You know that. Well, we'll have to decide how that works. What options they have? I, I'm sure it's not a uh, sign or leave. Uh, <laughs> I guess option. Yeah, it's a difficult decision for sure. Yep. yep. Just um, so just from an overview, um, this new training could cost the town uh, anywhere between five to ten thousand dollars per officer, per part time officer, um, of which we have eight. Um, it's actually with the 200 number, with the 200 hour number, it's closer to 3,800 uh, or $3,800. The mm -hmm. initial assessment that we were getting was anywhere between five and 10. Now we're at about 3,800 per okay, officer. 3,800 per officer. And then once they're trained, you're feeling that it may be, we may be better off instead of having eight or 10 part timers, we have three or four additional full timers. Um, that may make more sense. Um, so to cover all shifts, how many full-time police officers would we need? Um, so I haven't looked at all of the exact numbers and every available or every uh, possible shift schedule. Uh, basically what I'm looking at now is if we hired three additional full-time officers and put on a, a rotating schedule, we we would most likely be able to call cover all of our shifts, but that would require a four and two schedule. We could do it with two people. Theoretically, we could do it with two officers, but those two officers would have to work every weekend. Yeah, and absolutely. it's going to be difficult to find somebody that wants to work every weekend. That's just as an example, Hatfield has a position open right now, just working evenings, and that position has been open for about three months, mm -hmm. and they haven't gotten one applicant. Wow. The civil service exam is coming up um, sometime in September. And at this point, the last time they did the test, the, the same time frame, yep. they had about 15 to 16,000 police officers, applicants that signed up to take the test. They're sitting at about 1,800 people right now. So wow. there's a huge, a huge gap there. There's not a lot of uh, yeah. People banging down the door to, to get jobs, especially with all the police reform. It's, it's scaring a lot of gotcha. people. Gotcha. So those are things that we could face as well. So with our current officers, I know right now, if, if, if we put three positions, I have three people that would take them right now. Okay. Wow. And then we wouldn't have to go through any other, any other process. But again, it's, a, it's an additional cost into the budget. So. Okay. okay. All right, Chief. Uh, any other questions for Chief Savine? Go ahead, Fred. Yes. Uh... Are you currently using all three vehicles you have? And if not, what's your plan for the third vehicle? The plan for the third vehicle is the same as it's always been, the same as it was with the last third vehicle that we have. It's a detail car. It's a backup car and a detail car. Um, it, it's being used currently for uh, details, which we charge $10 per hour to use a cruiser for details. So it actually makes us money that pays for any repairs for that car. So it doesn't cost the town a dime out of the budget to pay for that. It's, it's paying for itself. Last year, there was a, I, I say last year, I, I kind of missed a year with the whole COVID thing, but 2019, um, we made about $4,500 with that car doing details. Um, so, you know, brakes, tires, radiator, anything that, that goes wrong with that car, no, we're able to maintain it with that fund instead of coming out of the, the cruiser the fund from the budget. So, okay, okay thank you. Hey, hey Jim, I, I apologize for being late, but the, the the numbers you were talking about are those numbers that would cover twenty four seven, or those numbers that would cover the 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 two shifts per day that we currently do? Is what we currently have. Okay, so three for three for 
um, 16, seven. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, chief. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thanks for the overview. Thanks for a look at what's coming downstream and um, sure we'll stay in touch. Did you, did you want to discuss it all? I know it's not part of the police budget, but capital expenses or capital. Brian, be before you go in that, Jim, Brian, um, our capital discussion is coming up. Um, um, you guys, you guys have a list that was um, provided and yeah, it, it would be, these guys aren't coming back for that capital no. discussion. So if we have questions, now's the time. Be a good time. Yep. Okay, Chief. Okay, Jim. All right. So the capital request that, that I submitted from the police department is the same as it was last year, minus the um, speed radar signs. So it's sitting at $5,000 right now. Those are for the repairs to the police station and painting on the inside and outside of the police station. The other the, the signs were the other $10,000 was taken off because we currently um, are ordering those signs off of a grant that was, it's a justice assistance grant that, that came out. So we're, we're getting four signs off of that grant. So we took it off of the capital um, expense for that. So the $5,000 is just for the, the repairs and um, painting of the police station. Okay. So that's the one request. The second request, and I don't know if you have spoken or are planning on speaking as from a fire department perspective, but the second request was the part two of the um, the radio project, the yep. county radio project. Mm -hmm. So I know we're still looking for the same amount of money. Some things changed with the grant um, <clears throat> for the radio systems. The dollars came in a little bit less for the radios, so we were able to get more radios for the fire department. So we still need to get some things for the fire department, and we're also looking at repeater systems uh, for the cruisers and one fire truck. The repeater systems, that was going to be a possibly a, a year three thing because they're so expensive, uh, but we're hoping that we can work that into this year if that capital um, request goes through. But that's for, uh, I can look up the exact, it's right around 20. 21, 500. What's that? 21, <clears throat> 21, 500, is that what the, we had? Yeah, okay, so that's, the, that's the second half of what, what we've already spent. The order, we haven't spent it yet. The radios are on order. Mm -hmm. um, Currently on order, we're expecting them to start rolling in. They're looking at about three to 400 subscriber units or radios, three to 400 per week um, over the next few weeks that will, they've got to program them and get them out to the departments. And then we're gonna be working on installations and so on and so forth. So we'll have our hands full with getting that stuff up and running over the next couple of months. <clears throat> so that those are the only two request and unless you have any other questions. Any questions further for Chief Savine on the police department? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your work. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Enjoy your evening. Me too. Um, okay. I see we have, uh, I saw Zach Smith here somewhere. I don't know. Oh, there he is. Hey, yeah. Back. How you doing? I'm great. How are you? Wonderful. Okay. Um, just in the uh, in the spirit of expediency, um, we've seen your um, budget, um, and it looks pretty clean. And it's um, a seven point zero two percent increase. So basically, as we were asking everybody, if you could just you know, go through where the increases are, where the decreases are, and the overall um, condition of the department. And if you see any issues coming up that we need to be aware of. Sure, absolutely. Um, I actually have a lower decrease than seven points uh, change. I actually have a 3% increase from last year with the latest yeah, um, so version. 
we should be looking at 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 in the top middle. There's submitted three. three that was two. that should have been handed out in the in that insert packets. Your bottom line should be a hundred thousand one hundred and forty four dollars for Waitley. That's what we 100, got. One hundred one four four. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. All righty. Okay. Great. Um, Terrific. Great. So, um, I, yeah, uh, I want to preface this by saying this is a level service budget. So we're not adding any staff. We're not adding any services. This is the exact same thing that we've had this ongoing year, just moving forward. So the only uh, increase in expenses are going to be personnel and employee benefits related. Um, that comes from as a as Deerfield being the municipal or excuse me, the fiduciary agent, um, mm -hmm. we follow their personnel committee uh, recommendations. And that is a step for the full time employees um, who are not maxed out. Uh, and then we do have two employees who have been with South County EMS, Deerfield EMS before that for going on 20 years now. They're maxed out, so they're receiving a 1% increase in pay because uh, they are not getting the step. Um, and then uh, just the, the normal changes with benefit costs. So those are numbers that are provided to us by the retirement board, our um, health insurance, things like that. So when we plug those in, um, that's where the increase in the budget is about 3% uh, overall. Um, for personnel costs. For the people listening at home who might not be familiar, we're an enterprise fund. Um, so the way that we operate is that we capture all of our true costs. So normally with another department, um, employee benefits and stuff might be lost someplace else. We actually account for that and then we assess it to the three towns, including Italy. So that's why you're seeing employee benefits there. Um, any questions on salaries and benefits before I move past those items? No. Nope. Anybody? Okay. Um, going into expenses, so this is all like the the uh, all the line items down here. Uh, very minor adjustments here and there. You know, a few hundred dollars here, a few hundred dollars there, just to adjust for mm -hmm. changes in um, billing expenses and things like that. Uh, the biggest change is actually a decrease, and that is the Deerfield indirect cost. So this is the amount that we pay to Deerfield as the fiduciary. Um, to do all of the front office stuff. So all of the accounting, all of the benefit, um, stuff like that, town administrator, uh, they calculate this amount. Uh, and that calculation has been discussed heavily with the Board of Oversight and continues to be discussed about whether this is an appropriate amount or not. Um, we think that this is, at this time, a fair amount, um, whether it needs to be adjusted one way or the other. That's continuing debate, but um, this is money that Deerfield says, okay, managing this department as a town agency, it actually causes real expense. And this is our share of it. Um, it is calculated um, as a percentage of the specific departments and personnel that we are um, a burden to, so to speak. And it's actually down uh, in fiscal year 22 from fiscal year 21. And that's because um, we didn't have any large capital expenditures in 21. We didn't buy any ambulances, anything like that. And so all of that accounting, um, clerical stuff, those types of things um, decreased. Yeah, so that number is, is down as well. Okay. Um, the, the other thing there is uh, OPEB, which stands for Other Post-Employment Benefits. These are the obligations that we're gonna have eventually when people start retiring and um, just throughout the Commonwealth, municipalities aren't doing a good job saving up for this and, and preparing for these eventual costs. Um, this is our uh, contribution to it based on the town of Deerfield's position. I believe it's 4% of um, benefits or employee costs. Mm -hmm. um, we don't, nobody thinks that that's going to be enough eventually, um, but it is us, again, as an enterprise fund, three town, just being above board, representing everything that we think we're going to need to be responsible for. Um, and, uh, oh, and one quick thing on the indirect cost, because we assess our total fees to all three towns, Deerfield is ostensibly charging us that money to r help run the department, but they're also responsible for 51% of that themselves. Um, so this is, this is like an above board accounting thing. So um, just a funny thing to remember there. Um, in the interest of expediency, 
Uh, any, any questions on expenses? Anything that stood out? Anybody like a clarification on anything um, before I move on to what happens next in the budget? Go. All right, great. So that that's that's what it costs. So our service is 24 seven paramedic ambulance um, available uh, within, I think it's like nine minutes and change average now to the three member communities. And we achieve that through one ambulance 24 seven plus additional staff during our busy hours. We've also been doing standby coverage for the vaccine clinics for South County. We do um, standbys for the football games, other athletic events, home visits, things like that. The cost to provide that service to be ready at a moment's notice and to do that, it, the bottom line is $1.4 million. Um, that's just what it costs to keep the lights on and to be available, right? That 1.4, but thankfully we have means to offset that cost. So first right off the bat would be our uh, bill for service. So we charge people and their insurance companies who use our services to recoup some of that cost and our anticipated revenue for um, medical service fees is how it's named is $525,000. Uh, that is unchanged from last year. Last year. Uh, we had, so COVID, it, it, the funny thing about COVID is it actually resulted in our call volume going down. Uh, that is because initially people didn't want to go to the hospital, right? Because that's where yeah. people with COVID are. So we saw a decrease in revenue, um, but it wasn't so much that we fell below our estimations. This number is generally conservative to give us some of that um, wiggle room there, that safety net. So if something like COVID happens, we can weather that. Um, and the reason why we're allowed to account for that um, is and do it that way is the next item is retained earnings. So as an enterprise fund, any revenue that we get above and beyond our estimations go straight back to South County EMS. And then we can apply that following years to reduce the assessment. Um, and so because that money comes right back, the, the overall expense stays the same, but the amount that you know is retained earnings, the amount that we um, charge to the individual towns, or excuse me, not to the individual towns, but that, that retained earnings might move and the budget might move, but the assessments stay relatively the same mm -hmm. is what I'm trying to say there. So that number um, is $310,401. That is money that is in our South County EMS Enterprise Fund that is being applied back towards fiscal year 22 to lower the assessment. So what is that money? So that money is actually representative of a few things and that's how we got to that. Uh, one of the line items in our budget is an operational reserve line item. It's $100,000 and it's it exists so if something catastrophic happened, um, an ambulance uh, gets into an accident and we have to remount that ambulance box to a new chassis and those were things that we didn't expect to spend or, or expenses above and beyond um, something that we normally budget for, that operational reserve exists for that purpose. When we don't spend it because we're an enterprise fund, that then goes back into the following year um, again. So it, it basically cancels itself out if we don't use it. So of that 310,000, 100,000 of it is last year's, um, it would actually be fiscal year 21's um, operational reserves there. Uh, and then the last $210,000 is um, both revenue over what we ex expected to receive, right? So when we um, budget conservatively for revenue, there's additional there. And then also what we do is a portion of that additional revenue that we get every year, we put aside for our eventual ambulance replacement. We know that this is happening. We know it's coming down the pike. And so we have the opportunity to take some of our revenue from billing, put it aside. So when it comes time to replace an ambulance, mm -hmm. we have all the money on hand. Um, and so as an enterprise fund, that all that money has to live in the enterprise fund. We can't put it into an ambulance fund or anything like that. So you'll see over time, those retained earnings will actually grow because we're, we're putting money aside for that ambulance. And then eventually we'll pay for the ambulance. Um, the nice thing is the budget, the bottom line maintains level just because of the way that those things kind of even themselves out. 
So together, those two things that the, the revenue from billing and the retained earnings is $835,401. That is money that is going towards the budget already, money that we don't have to assess to the member mm -hmm. towns. So what we're left with is $597,443. That is the money that we actually have to come up with for fiscal year 22 to cover um, the, the difference in that budget. Yep. Weight we share, 16.76% um, works out to 100,144. So for a $1.4 million 24 seven ALS service, Waitley it's costing you $100,000, um, 100,144. Um, I, it's up 3% or $3,000 from last year. My apologies um, about that. Um, it's actually up from last year, but you'll see over time, we've actually trended down from our inception over 20% at this point. And that's just kind of getting our sea legs, figuring out how to be more efficient, getting better at billing and revenue and stuff like that. So uh, it's a little bit of a bump, but we're still trending down over time and, and we're gonna reach a really nice equilibrium here um, coming up in the next few years. Um, okay. Questions, comments, okay, concerns? We'll, we'll take it, okay? We'll okay. Take it. <laughs> If we have to, uh, <laughs> you sold me. All right, you sold Great. me. Uh, Great. Any questions for Zach um, regarding the, um, the budget and, and what's going on with uh, EMS, um, service to the town? Um, while he's here, um, this is- Zach, tell the, uh, t tell the finance committee and, and select board um, how many runs Waitley made uh, over the past 12 months. Let me refer to my notes so I don't say something silly. So, uh, it, so uh, we we just do this by calendar year. It's easy to come up with numbers during budget time. So, last calendar year, twenty twenty, Waitley's runs were one hundred and ninety seven, and I should say that number represents patients, patient assessments, potentially sick people. That doesn't necessarily capture if the fire department's fighting a, a fire and we're standing by for them or anything like that. Yeah. But uh, 197 emergency patient assessments for Wheatley in uh, 2020. Um, and that is of out of 999 total, we actually went down because of COVID last year. So that is, uh, 19.7% of our total calls. Thank you. And I don't know if I just opened a can of worms there. What, what's your normal oh, percentage? It's, it's good can. It's a great can. Yeah, so you pay 16.7, you accounted for 19 and change. Don't, and yeah. don't tell the other towns that. No. I won't. Well, you know, the caveat is an ebb and flow, right? So, you know, next year might be Sunderland's turn to, uh, right. to take this like that. <laughs> exactly. Um, Okay, well, thank you again for that explanation and the overview and understanding of what's going on with SCEMS. Yeah. Um, this is it, last call, any questions? No. So the, the percent Wait. share for, for, for any town is based on the number of calls, what you're saying? Uh, no, actually it's based on a equalized population percentage, it's, it's a very complicated thing that they do for these types of shared services. It just happens to work out that because the demographics are relatively similar amongst the three towns, everybody's usage of the ambulance is in proportion to their population density and their, their median incomes and all those things. So it's a happy accident in this case is what I would say. Okay, well, that's good to, good to know. Good explanation. So thank you, Zach. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. Have a good no night. No problem. You know how to get me. All right. Exactly. Thank you. All right. Um, I realized something when I saw uh, Keith come back. Oh, Keith's gone now. Oh, look who's here, Wayne Nikoski. Oh, my goodness gracious. Wayne, how you been? Uh, Not bad, you. But um, in, in our discussion on town buildings, Keith's going to have to do that, right, Brian, or not? Muted. Hello, Brian. My I was bad. muted. I, I can talk about it. There, there's, there's not much changes there. Okay, okay, not good. Not many changes there. 
Okay, so we have Wayne here. We got the water department. Let's jump on that now. Um, while well, we're still fresh and um, ready to go, Wayne. Yep. How's life? It's going. All right. Good. 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 Um, I'm just trying to get a, the water department up here. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Uh, Enterprise Fund Water Department. As I, as we've been saying with all departments tonight, in the, uh, you know, for a little uh, expediency and uh, flow, um, why don't you just give us um, the um, the increases or decreases that led to the overall um, percentage um, within the department? And what I'm looking at basically is the front page says 1.9 percent a seven thousand dollar increase but um why don't you explain it to us in your own words all right where where the increase comes from is it sounds like it's finally going to happen this year that by the end of the year the booster station will be built and the center of town will be connected mm -hmm. so really all the increases in my budget are based on what it's going to cost to run that booster station for the year. I mean, a lot of them were tough. I mean, the electricity was a tough one. I kind of, Nicholas was, he gave me his figures on what it costs to run his plant now. And I kind of took the numbers from what it costs to run our Westbrook booster station per household and what it costs down here at the main pumping plant per gallon in electricity to figure out roughly what it would cost to run that. See, you know, they're gonna be similar size pumps in there as the Westbrook booster station. The other increases are, there's gonna be more tests, water tests that I have to do once that goes online and those houses get put on. We'll, where normally we got to do 10 lead tests every three years, where once that goes online, they'll push us up to 20 every year for the next three years. Just little things like that. The maintenance and the parts went up a little bit. Not, you know, I mean, that's yeah, no, that's just true. knowing that some of that stuff is older and yep. some of it's probably going to have to get replaced or fixed. Our merger expenses that and the building issues went down because I mean, that thing's gonna be brand new. Yep. Most of the engineering, most of that stuff's all done with that project. Other than that, everything else pretty yep. much stayed the same. Right, right. Um, anything coming down the future that we should be aware of that might hit the bottom line? Us? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, we should have the booster pumps in down here before, hopefully before this summer. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are looking into starting to look into, in our minds, two major things. One, develop, well, first finding and, and developing another well for the town to increase its capacity and two, it always made me nervous because we'd like to connect. Right now, the line ends on both ends of Egypt. Well, it goes about three quarters of the way down the east part of Egypt Road and then comes across Route 5. And we'd like, we want to connect that loop together. One to make the water quality better for that end of town. But a major reason would be that if anything happened to the one pipe between route five and the railroad tracks on Christian lane, it would mean all of East Waitley's out of water and there's no way to get it there until that gets fixed. So at least by connecting Egypt road, it gives you a second way to get the water across 91 and through the tracks. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's downstream then that's, yeah, that's like, Right. Well, we're hoping to do it. You know, I mean, it'd be nice to do it within the next 10 to 15 years, but. 
Yeah. Well, hey, hey, Wayne, let me ask you about that, though, because I, I worry about the people who are on, um, sorry, what's the circular road, the new development, Pine Plains Estates. I, I'm, I'm not convinced that their water is as good as, as, as other parts sometimes because the water does sit there. And so I, I, I do think that we need to take a look at the water quality to make sure that we're providing the same service delivery because none of us want to be on the front page of the New York Times for some, no. some quality issue that, that, we, that we foresaw and didn't act on. Right. Yeah. No, we're starting. I mean, it's, I mean, I think the biggest holdup with that's going to be, that's going to take the most time with that is getting underneath the railroad tracks. I mean, one thing that did help the, the water quality down that end of Long Plain Road is actually that development that because there's just, there's more houses using it now. So the turnover is a bit better, yeah. but I mean, closing that loop would be, it'd make it a lot better. The quality would go up for the southern end, the Long Plain Road, Pine Plain Estates, as well as the southern end of Route 5. Wayne, excuse me, Jonathan, are you done? Yes, I am. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Um, Wayne, what are we getting? What's, what's our cost for a new hookup for a new house? 5000 Okay. And... What's the latest cost per gallon to deliver? To deliver? Yep. It's about, it's to produce it and deliver. It's, it's just, just over a penny. Hmm. Okay. All right. And how does that, you know, we had a discussion some time back about how long it had been since rates had kept up with yeah. costs. And um, I, I just don't know. I mean, how does, what's, I mean, this just over a penny, how does that, I mean, what was it before a half a penny? I, I don't know. Um, yeah. I would say five years ago. Yeah. It was probably somewhere around a half a cent per gallon to produce down here. Hmm. Okay. That's why, what was it, about three years ago, we kind of had that big jump in the rate from 410 a thousand gallons to 465 to kind of catch up with times. Right. And it's, I can't say it's going to happen this year, but I mean, the commissioners, they have been talking in that, I have been looking into in the past couple of months into surrounding towns, you know, I mean, what they charge and yeah for water mm -hmm. okay but when yeah. that includes the administrative cost of of the water department as well it's just not the cost to pump the water out of the ground no i mean the easiest way to figure is i just you know, i mean you take what i spent for the budget say last year because you know the total numbers and just divide it by the total number of gallons that were made down here. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So it includes everything. It's pretty. Yeah, everything. Straightforward. So a cost per gallon, cost per pupil, cost per mile. Kind of all coming together. Like it. Um, okay. Does anyone have any further questions for Wayne um, regarding the enterprise fund, water department, etc.? I guess that's a wrap. So Wayne, thank you for coming out and taking your time and thanks for doing a good job. All right. All right, man. See ya. Bye. Uh, Bye. Okay. Next on the uh, list tonight, we have two things. We have town buildings and Tritown Beach and the audit. Let's, uh, let's touch on town buildings very quickly at this point. Brian. I'll try that again. Uh, the only two increases are, um, I'm looking at um, doubling the hours of the town custodian. Um, and I'll touch on that in a second. And then based okay. on usage from last year, um, increasing natural gas um, up $1,000 from 11000 to $12,000. Um, going back to the... 
Yeah, usage uh, in 2020 was uh, 10,200. Um, and I suspect that cost will continue to go up for the following year. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the custodian, um, it's purely COVID related. Um, as we open the building up more, we're going to need to do more cleaning. Um, yeah. As we open up the town hall, we're going to need to do more cleaning. Um, it's just really the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. um, as you may have heard, and I and we've talked about, at least Fred and I have talked about a little bit. Um, there's the America Rescue Plan money. I haven't seen um, the regulations on those as to how we can spend that money. Do we know um, what it is in terms of the amount? Yeah, we don't have a final amount. Well, the estimates that are kicking around there are are somewhere in the ballpark of of four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, um, but we don't know how those monies can be spent. Mm -hmm. yet um but if it's if, if they're geared more towards economic recovery then we think the regulations will be a little bit looser if they're geared towards um response to the to the pandemic like the uh the cares act money was it's going to be a little bit more restricted um but that may be a source that it, it that may be a case where if we see that money and we see those regulations that's that's something that maybe we could take out of the budget. Yep. Um, but at this point, the cleaning is something that we're going to have to do and do more of. Okay. At least for geez, your guess is as good as mine. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Any questions for Brian regarding town buildings? Okay. Um. Regarding this, the. The, uh, the old town hall or the town hall. Um, are we all set with regards to um, what we charge for use of that hall? Yeah. That's okay. All right. I'll yeah, just... it's listed on the website. Okay, good. So there are no issues there. Okay, great. Um, it's not open now, but. <laughs> no, I, I, I realize that. Um, um, that's good. Right okay. now, we'll, we'll take your fee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alrighty, um, Tri Town Beach. I know there's there isn't a um, a real budget, but Jonathan is here, and um, I know he's involved. We, we need a we need a placeholder. Um, I, if I were a betting man, I would say that Tri Town Beach will not open this summer, mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that is because, as we discussed in the last meeting, um, the members of the commission want to give it a complete makeover. Mm -hmm. and to do that effectively and efficiently, uh, if it's open, uh, the, 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 the usage just gets in the way of things we need to do. Yeah. Um, and we don't even know all that we, you know, we don't know what we don't know it's at some level already. Yeah. Um, we may decide to open to service uh, River Valley Camp, uh, the, those campers. We think we possibly can do that. But again, that decision will even be made based upon what we decide we need to or can do um, to make it a more functional facility and appealing facility for the people of, of, of the community. So we okay. will need a maintenance placeholder, certainly yeah. at a minimum. And I'll get you, I'll get you all that as quickly as I can. Okay. Is there, is there a concern with weeds there that are out of control? There's a concern with everything, Paul. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the stuff that's growing in the water. It's the stuff that's growing on the banks of the water. Um, I went down there with an environmental scientist, Brian, when we were down, you know, eight months ago, nine months ago, maybe not that long. Um, it was a fall time, yeah. There are ways to keep those, because I talked about, do we need to dredge the stupid thing? And, and, and there, are, there are phosphors that can, can be placed on the, on the bed of the, of the pond that could keep those down. Um, we did find out that it is a national heritage site um, Brian and I have both scratched our head how a place that used to be sandy and, you know, not a pond can suddenly <laughs> turn into a national heritage site yeah. uh, to protect whatever. But that being said, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, so that's all part of the research that has to go into it. But, but the weeds okay. and the growth and the muck, um, you know, it, it's part of the research. And, and I just I'm not convinced that we can do that if we're open. Um, but I, I very much see as see it as an asset that the town has, but it is very much underutilizing currently. 
that should be a, 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 a gem that attracts people to want to live, play. I agree. And more I agree. Are there any questions for Jonathan regarding the Tritown Beach? Okay. So we'll just wait to see how it develops and uh, hopefully things will go the right way. Yeah. So, Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Brian, um, when I look at this list, I think the only thing we did not, well, we actually did talk about the audit, didn't we? But in the expenses, I, oh, did we? no, we did not. No, we I got to stop talking while I'm muted. Okay. Um, so in, ter in terms of how we do the audits here, um, so the auditor recommends and we use, well, we typically use Scanlon and Associates. Um, so they recommend that we do a full audit every three years and we do look backs for the intervening two fiscal years. Um, so we try to, um, how the town has done it in the past is we, we just try to um, take a piece of those costs each year and add it to the budget. Last year, um, because we had money saved up in the account, we decided not to, to fund that. Um, we're going to have our audit for um, fiscal year 21. I think that's going to start this May with look backs to 19 and 18. Mm -hmm. So that's going to use up a lot of the funds we have in that account. So we'll have to replenish those with the goal of having enough money in year three to, to uh, do the next audits for 21, 22, and 23. Okay. Well, that's, um, that looks like it does it for the entire, the budget overview. The only thing we did not do is we did not vote on the minutes from the last meeting. And because I forgot. Okay. So um, has, I'm sure everyone's had a chance to read the minutes from the last meeting. Amy, nice job. Um, do I have a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Second. Let's take a roll call. Um, yes. Paul, yes. Roger? Yes. Fred? Yes. Jim? Yes. Bob? Yes. Okay. It's good. Are there any further questions about anything that we covered tonight? Any department? Um, Brian? You want to give us uh, what's our, ne our next meeting date, which will probably be a voting date? Well, we were um, we have scheduled the twentieth. Okay. Um, hold on one second. Let me grab my schedule here. Um, we had on the twentieth. We were gonna. Uh, Review and vote on capital project recommendations, uh, review and vote personnel committee recommendations, and then review and discuss miscellaneous spending articles. But I think one of the things that, that I want to talk about, and that's what four on the agenda here is, um, what are we going to, how do you want to proceed with the, with the town operating budget um, in terms of looking at the overall picture? Um, you know, Fred had developed a, a tool last year where we use the we use this budget tool and I can update that and we can take a look at the big picture and how it stacks up. I think that's that was a good tool. Yeah, I agree. Um so we can update that based on the current numbers. Um I'll I'll edit the library budget. Yeah. Um so that so what the numbers we're working with are our most current. Okay. Um the personnel committee has has finished its has finished meeting, so I'll have those recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, I'll include numbers for those as well. So we're looking at we're looking at the complete picture. Obviously, like every year, we won't have. Hopefully, the state won't be as late as it was last time, but we're not going to have accurate state numbers. But we'll at least have okay. at least the governor's budget, uh, yeah. the go the governor's budget numbers, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll have to. Um, I guess based on that, we can look and then talk about specific budgets if, if that's what you want to do, or if that's what the committee wants to do. Okay. Um, well, let's just schedule for the 20th, and we have an agenda, and 
if it's possible that we can wrap everything up on the 20th, that would be preferable to everybody if we can. If that's not possible because of uh, reimbursement numbers, et cetera, and we can't put a final stamp on it, then we'll, we will push it over to the next meeting date. But um, is everybody good with that? You, um, I mean, if we can, you know. Sounds plausible. You know, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. try to, you know, squeeze it in if, you know, it means it's gonna be a shortcut. But um, so anyway, Tuesday the 20th, um, we will go over uh, what's on the agenda and if we can deal with the operating budget at the same time and uh, we can take a vote on that, so be it. And we'll see how that time frame times out. Any questions? Brian, you good? I'm good. Okay, very good. Thank you, everybody. Stay well. Have Thanks a great night. Have a good night. Thank night. you. Night. See you. Night. All right. Night.